Hello, I'm Dan. Same as that idiot over there, but younger and better looking. He, or I, or us, are the best man and in charge of saying lovely things about the beautiful bride Erin, whilst we perform a complete character assassination of our delightful friend Lewis. What do you think, Dan? Now, before I continue, even though this is merely a cartoon, we are talking about Lewis here, so I cannot guarantee the odd piece of profanity. Those that are offended by the words b b b and shit probably have been invited by accident, so best leave now. Anyway, like I said, I'm Dan, Lewis's best friend, and this is our story. I remember the first time I saw Lewis. It was the spring of 2006, and we were still at school. I was tall, dark and handsome, graced with silky sporting skills, popular, but academically average. Lewis was, well, Lewis. At approximately 5 foot 4 inches on a good day, chubby, disruptive, lazy, and worst of all, curly, you see, Lewis was an oddity, a mystery, an enigma, but there was something magical that drew us together. At first, we weren't the most visually suited best mates, I have to say. Considering I'm about 10 foot 3, and he was the height of a 7 year old, at times we could have been mistaken for father and son, Willy Wonka and his trusty Oompa Loompa, or Gandalf and Frodo, but we bonded over our love of straightening hair and pop punk. Pretty soon, we were destined to become the greatest punk rock outfit that Royston had ever seen. Or not. By the time we hit 18, we'd become almost inseparable. But our relationship was to be put to the test by Lewis's newfound love of the ganja plant. Once the haze had cleared, with most of Lewis's brain cells, we found each other again, and Gandalf and Frodo's adventures would continue. One year, I joined Lewis on a family holiday to the Dominican Republic. Lewis took it upon himself to book a boat trip. Unfortunately, what he'd failed to realise was that this was a male-only boat trip, and once we boarded and set sail, we were surrounded by incredibly muscular men in G-strings, oiled up like a bag of sexy chips. Even to this day, I still don't think Lewis realised there were no women on board, but it wasn't the first time Lewis had shown an inaptitude for the ladies. You see, Lewis was what is technically known as a bird repeller. Whether the ladies were put off by his lacking height, inability to straighten his curly mop, or the fact that he was camper than a row of tents, I will never know. Sadly, he had very limited luck with the female species. I do recall one party where we thought Lewis's luck may have turned a corner. We had arrived at a friend's house, already rather merry, and the party was in full swing. A rather rotund young lady had instantly taken a shine to Lewis, and it wasn't too long before they were swapping saliva on the sofa. I was sat right next to the sad couple with a serious case of the munchies and a large bag of crisps. Gradually the night went on, the room got darker and the bag of crisps got smaller. The rotund girl's head grew gradually lower towards Lewis's lap. Before long, I felt there was more than saliva being passed between our lips. To this day, I'm still certain it was the smell of the smoky bacon flavoured crisps that tempted the fair maiden to sample the delights of Lewis's own sausage. I just wished it wasn't so close to me. I did, however, like the eye contact Lewis was giving me. Not all of my memories consisted of Lewis's failed sexual prowess. He did have a very sensitive, compassionate and jovial sense of humour, which can only really be highlighted by the time he decided to take a giant shit on a brand new Jaguar. Now we've all been caught short at some point in our life, but Lewis was literally two minutes from home. I could see his mum hanging up the washing in the back garden. Sadly, I was semi-responsible, as I did dare him to do it. But I will never forget the sight of Lewis clambering onto the jag, dropping his trousers and unloading the contents of his bowels on the poor, unsuspecting wankermobile. But that was classic Lewis. Earlier, I mentioned that Lewis and his curly hair was an enigma, but there was nothing more mysterious than how he managed to pull Erin. When he mentioned that they'd met through Tinder, I thought he must have meant Grinder. But when he showed me her picture, I couldn't believe it. Something had to be wrong with her. Sadly, not only is she beautiful, kind and incredibly smart, it seems she is perfectly sane, which disturbs me more than anything. I can only put it down to pity that she's with him, and I suspect most of you would agree. One day, Lewis said that Gandalf and Frodo had one last mission to complete, to forge a ring and bring it back to his one true love. And so, we set forth, battled punk demons, gay orcs and hungry giants returning triumphantly with one ring to not only rule them all but most importantly Erin. So now it's time for me to pass you back to the lanky fool over there to continue this story. He is neither as charming or as witty as me 
but I have the added benefit of a scriptwriter, animation team and director. So please be kind, he's already changed his pants twice and already on his fifth pint. Over to you big man and good luck.